Welcome to the half year anniversary of Apathetic Weekend Update. I'm your host, guy who's finally ready to start taking this seriously, so let's hop right into it. Our top story tonight, a man from Melbourne, Australia, faces stiff opposition to his signature shaped like a... Really? Shaped like a penis. Ah, should be getting to rehearsal. Other rejected signatures in the past have included this v monster, the Prophet Muhammad, the Prophet Muhammad dressed as a v monster, and the Sistine Chapel. Uh, mostly because it takes 48 months to sign anything. Moving on, this week, after Obama's emotional address on gun control, presidential candidate slash man who was carefully bred to speak through garden hoses, Donald Trump, announced that even though he would go down five points, he thought Obama's tears were real, unwittingly revealing how to put an end to his campaign by making Obama cry seven more times. If you put 10,000 hours towards a waste of time, does that make you a master of disappointing your parents? Social media was a flurry this week with millions of users posting about the new pop culture phenomenon, How to Make a Murderer, which I assume has something to do with George R.R. R. Martin telling fans the next Game of Thrones book was delayed again. Is that right? I feel like that's right. Quick life hack. If your garbage overshoots the waste paper basket, just yell field goal. This week, Las Vegas officially banned the sale of puppies originating at puppy mills, putting an end to the city's best canine job, sex dog. You won't take a bone, you'll bring one. It being the half year anniversary of the show, I thought it might be fun to ask some previous guests what their favorite moments of the first six months were. So joining us now is Apathetic Weekend Update's very first correspondent, Leland Harper. Leland? Just once could we do this not when I'm working? Ah, classic Leland. I'm serious. I lose a lot of business when you do this. Well, I'm sure it's not that I bad. I couldn't afford health insurance last month. Okay, that's kind of unfortunate. My ear started bleeding the other day. Had to just walk it off. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and change subjects now. Uh, what? Would you say your favorite moment of the past six months of the show have been? Obviously the episodes I was on. Kind of narcissistic, but everyone's entitled to their opinion. Well, except that one with the annoying generic white girl. Ashley? You mean Carly? Let's be real. They're equally unoriginal names. Oh, you are not gonna like the next guest For there. For realsies? Unoriginal, huh? Well, would an unoriginal person have a Kanye West ringtone they used to occasionally use? I guess that depends. Was it Gold Digger? Maybe. You know, I shouldn't even have to deal with this, because Get Like Miley is textbook something a basic bitch would get at the tryhard store. You know? I know you probably have a Grey's Anatomy quote tatted on you. Uh, for your information, Lauren Conrad, and tattoos are totes badass. Thank you. Uh, well, I... Not on you. Hey, look, I was really hoping this could be an argument-free segment. All I want to know is what you think the best moment of the past half year of Apathetic Weekend Update was. Whatever the opposite of Leland being on was. Okay, I can work with that. Uh, it would probably be like the musical guest that played Wagon Wheel on a guitar. Oh, someone with real talent. That does sound like the opposite of Leland. Enough. All of your answers so far have been, uh... Lame! Simon? Lame, lame, lame. Okay, you're not being very- If you guys were horses, I'd be gluing furniture together with you by now. That's how lame you are. All right, well, what would your suggestion be? Clearly, the answer is the pinata full of scorpions. That makes no sense as an answer to the question. Yeah, well, then you didn't ask the right question. What on earth could that have possibly been an answer what to? What to bring to a child's birthday? Why would that ever be the right thing to bring? Obviously, the child is a fan of scorpions. Wouldn't hitting it with a bat kill them? Who said anything about hitting the pinata with a bat? Who are you trying to raise? Psychopaths? Wait, so then how does anyone appreciate the scorpions? They all eat each other until there's one left, and then it hatches with its claws. That is terrifying. Hey, you asked. That's the grossest thing I've heard since Leland started speaking. I hope you drown in a mason jar of pressed juice later. You guys, could you not- You look like you read a poorly written article about Nick Cannon and styled your life around ha. it. Okay. 
Sure. Lame! Oh my god, shut up. Oh, go get another tattoo, you walking excuse to justify your tax bracket. At least I don't look like I was kicked out of the Musketeers, you rejected D'Artagnan looking f boy. Uh, yeah. How long does it take each morning to style your face like the lamest Tim Burton villain? Hey Leland, can you get Carly to shut the f ups on the rocks? Actually, no rocks. Just get her to shut the f ups. Nice. Hey, what's going on? We still doing this thing? Oh my god. Anto, I'm so sorry. I totally forgot I booked you. Um, hold on. <clears throat> yeah, that's cool. Oh, no, it's not, man. Uh, <clears throat> what has been your favorite moment of the past half year of Apathetic Weekend Update? Oh, yeah, I, I never watched any. What? But you said you did. You said you watched all of them. That's why you're here. Why did you... Didn't want to hurt your feelings. What kind of monster do you think I am? Oh, right, man. Well, I appreciate no, your... No, seriously. What kind of monster? Maybe like a Dracula? Wait, why the hell would you be a Dracula? Have you ever seen me in a cape? No, literally never. I think I'd look good in one. Sure, why not? So what's up with everybody screaming at each other? Ugh, it's become a bit of a theme. I have guests on, they hurl petty insults at each other, and then, I don't know, usually come after me. You want me to help? That would be amazing. If you could put an end to all this, I'd be so happy. Agreed. Hey, Chris Brown. Knock off Kardashian, DJ Barista. Not the greeting I would have gone with. Why are you bickering with each other? Nice. When who you should be bickering with is the host. Wait, what? Okay, discount Steve Aoki. Maybe. Yeah, okay, I agree. Yeah, I can get down with that. Yeah, okay. But only because he knew the look I was going for. Hey, hey, hey yeah, come on. Turning on me would be so cliche right now. You're not those types of guests, are you? Hey, why don't you have more respectful guests on? Who do you think you are? Mike Bullard too? Yeah, and while you're at it, why not switch things up and spend the next half year making a good show? Yeah, apathetic weekend update? Are you sure you don't mean apathetic weekend update? Yeah! <laughs> that was kind of fun. Congratulations, you got the joke. Is that more like how it goes? Almost to a T. Awesome! I'm gonna have to start watching these. Leland, Carly, Simon, and Anto, everybody. I think only 26 weeks ago, I didn't have this ingrown toenail. Moving on, this week the Powerball grows to the largest jackpot in American history with a cash out of 1.3 billion. To put that amount of money in perspective, you would have to buy the rights to Star Wars and make Three and a half Force Awakens to earn that much. Could even make one all Jar Jar. Shout out to Anto Chan for lending me his camera when that gypsy curse caused mine to only film terrible car crashes. In Atlanta this Saturday, a rapper was detained for withdrawing 200 grand of his own money from the bank, which in itself is not a crime, but there were like a bajillion people in line. And he kept inquiring about special offers. Just hit return card! Hit return card! Mucho thanks to Elena O'Brien for correcting Apathetic Weekend Update set lighting from what it used to be. On Friday, in response to North Korea's first successful hydrogen bomb test, South Korea began blasting K-pop music across the border. Likely because they too also wanted to show off their greatest world-dominating achievement. 2.5 billion views. That's a Opa Gangnam life style. Shout out to Final Cut Pro, whose software has made me more presentable by allowing me to edit out my horns and forehead eye in post. Also, a big thank you to Pirate Bay for lending me Final Cut Pro. Without you, I'd have to edit everything on Vine. And I'm not black or in middle school. So that's a scary thought. Big news from Amber Rose's ex-boyfriend on Friday, Kanye West tweeted the release date of his new album. So this just in, Yeezy season approaching. Okay, I uh, actually just don't get a lot of use out of these. Yeah. Fingers crossed I don't glee it up and become what I'm making fun of in the second half of my first season. Also, knock on wood, no heroin overdoses. Oh, like you haven't needed carbs.
And that's it for the first half year of Apathetic Weekend Update. Uh, if you enjoyed any part of it or are unaware of how questionable previous episodes have been, please like, comment below, share with your friends, maybe even subscribe. Uh, I even added this fancy little box thingy in the corner to make it unfathomably easy. And uh, yeah, I've been your host, Guy, who's spent the past 26 consecutive weekends wondering if dignity is just a concept. Good night. Oh wait, uh, before I cap this thing off, I have one more person to thank, uh, whom without, none of this would be possible. My, as of this week, former roommate, Andrew Erickson. A guy who for six months put up with furniture and lights relocated so I could get my stupid shot, and who chilled out respectfully when I needed quiet on set to get the right take of me describing Lenny Kravitz's dick. Which for the record, looks like if you were trying to make a bran muffin with a pan that was five, six times too deep, and then you took that muffin and you stapled it to Lenny Kravitz with a gold keychain. Yeah. For the past 16 months, uh, we lived together, first in the single 600 square foot shoebox of my bachelor apartment, uh, and then following a desperate need for personal space and an irresponsible Halloween, we moved to the City Place condos, where dreams and rent are co-signed by your parents. And for 14 months, we made it through balloon soccer, Eastern European prostitute couch bed bugs, experienced the game-changing Keanu phenomenon that was John Wick, learned the five essential properties of Diet Coke, light, red, refreshing, boost, and luxe. We honored the Mad Max soundtrack, 4 a.m. Bitch Better Have My Monies, a wall of high fashion and Kanye coffee table book wallpaper, $150 worth of ice cream bought for $25, and plenty of other inside jokes that everyone besides Erickson is probably getting sick of hearing about. That is, uh, believe it or not, the best picture of the two of us together. Uh, turns out we did not take a lot of pictures. Uh, and so anyway, so this Thursday, he moved to Vancouver to be with his lady love, Nicole Parks, also a friend of the show. Well, this is a tribute to one of the finest roommates a fake news anchor could ask for. Uh, Erickson, you were a gem, an exceptional human being, and partier, terrible sense of fashion, uh, a living legend. I'm so lucky my producer is a hack that thinks adding paranormal elements to the show will increase its ratings. So, ah, joining us now, the ghost of my former roommate, Andrew Erickson. Hey, bud. Hey, man. Were you uh, expecting that tribute? Nah, that was great. Uh, did you have any idea I was going to re-edit your footage to make it seem like you're aware of what's going on right now? None at all. I'll tell you what, though. It's genius. Ah, you're so flattering. What do you think the most memorable part of living together was? How few girls you brought home. Uh, well, I guess that's on me for editing that part in. Uh, I'm really gonna miss you, man. Okay, calm down, Princess Melodrama. Yeah, relationship Erickson is gone. Bachelor Ghost Erickson's here to stay! Oh, that's too cool. To another half year. Damn right to another half year. Ah. Erickson. I guess he really is gone. Ah, gotcha! Ah! <laughs>